Hi, I'm Chuck Stout, curator at the Wings Over the Rockies Air and Space Museum. Today we're going to go behind the wings of the Republic RF-84K Thunderflash, a 1950s reconnaissance airplane that was carried as a parasite under a larger airplane to its distant destinations. This one's going to be cool. It's time to go behind the wings. Here at the Wings Over the Rockies Air and Space Museum, we have over 70 iconic aircraft and spacecraft in our collection housed in this beautiful World War II era hangar. And one of them is the Republic RF-84K. The Republic RF-84K is the parasite version of the RF-84F Thunderflash. This is one of only three left in the world of the 25 that were built. Now, our restorations team has done a magnificent job of bringing this back from oblivion. Let's take a closer look. Now, we called this airplane a parasite. To understand exactly what that means, we'll have to go back to the beginning of the Cold War in the mid-1950s and the inception of Project FICON. The ultimate goal of this project is to provide a means of combining the high performance of an RF-84 with a long-range capability of an RB-36 for bomb damage assessment missions. So as the Cold War gained momentum, the United States needed factual aerial reconnaissance information on the Soviet Union's military power. In particular, their nuclear weapons programs, the quantity and types of their aircraft, and their rocket and missile research. But the large reconnaissance airplanes with the range to fly to the Soviet Union and back were relatively slow and easy for the Soviets to track and shoot down. So small, fast reconnaissance jets had the speed, but they couldn't fly the long distances. Aerial refueling wasn't really practical yet. The enormous Convair B-36 bomber had the range, and it also had the ability to lift and carry a speedy Republic RF-84 jet. What if the B-36 could carry the RF-84 most of the distance to the Soviet Union, then release the jet to dash in and get the pictures? Then the RF-84 could fly back to the waiting B-36, hook onto a trapeze frame hanging below the belly of the bomber, and be raised back up for the long ride home to the United States. These trips are about 10 hours each way. The jet wouldn't fit inside the B-36, but if the horizontal tail was modified to angle downward, enough of the F-84 would fit up inside the B-36 to reduce drag and allow the F-84 pilot to ride home in the B-36, which was a little bit more comfortable. The RF-84K was a reconnaissance airplane and therefore it carried cameras. Now, this was before the digital age, so these were film cameras. They would have to carry the film in these big camera cartridges on the back. The cartridges would be taken off when the airplane landed, taken to a film processing place, and then interpreted by photo interpreters. The cameras themselves are very large, as you can see. Long focal length, big lenses, because they were taking pictures over dozens, sometimes hundreds of miles. The airplane didn't carry cameras behind every window, but it has 10 different windows that cameras can use, and it usually carried several on each mission, different cameras for different missions. Now, the reconnaissance F-84s, the RF-84s, were developed from the fighter version, the F-84, and they retained some armament. They had four 50 caliber machine guns buried in the wing route here. The machine guns came back about here, and carried their ammunition in cans inboard from that, the F-84 could also carry a Mark VII nuclear bomb. As the experimental program progressed, the Air Force activated the 91st Strategic Reconnaissance Squadron in 1955. Unfortunately, the process of disconnecting and hooking back onto the trapeze under the B-36 was very difficult due to the turbulence under the bomber and the sensitive handling of the RF-84K. Although experienced test pilots could manage to do it in daylight and in nice weather, the reality of operating at night in difficult weather near enemy territory, maybe with people shooting at you, was probably not practical for regular Air Force pilots. So the FICON project was developed because they didn't yet have reliable air-to-air -air refueling. But after the FICON project ended, this airplane was retrofitted with a air-to-air -air refueling receptacle, so it rejoined the ranks as an airplane that was capable of being refueled in midair. But that's probably enough about Project FICON for now. Let's talk about this particular airplane and how our restorations team brought it back from a terrible state. <laughs> 
They put in hundreds of hours. They're incredibly talented. Well, let's go talk to one. This is a museum. This airplane will never fly again. So you guys are trying to bring it back to how it would have looked in service. And that means that uh, you're looking at historic documents. You're looking at old pictures. A lot of research went into the paint that we have applied to this airplane. As you can see the red paint, the black paint that was used when this project was live. A lot of the problem was um, black and white photographs. So trying to determine whether it was red or blue a lot of times was kind of tough to do. And that's what it took in order to get this airplane looking like it did, did in the 1950s. This airplane arrived in 1993. When it got here, it had, it, the entire airplane was painted gray. They stripped all the paint off and we ended up with a very dull silver airplane with a lot of leftover paint that made it look pretty messy. The only way to do it is with aluminum wool and elbow grease. So that's what we started. And it took us four and a half years to get the shine that we have on it. A few square inches at, at a time. I tried the power tool trick and it didn't work. So it was wax on, wax off. Really looks great. Tell us about all the, the stencil work. The interesting thing about the stenciling is we know it's accurate because after that paint was all stripped off, it left a ghosted image of all the text on the metal. So all we're doing is tracing right over the top of it. Seeing an airplane with all of those stencils restored is breathtaking. I understand that when the airplane came to Wings Over the Rockies, it had been outdoors, it was a gate guard, and the cockpit had been completely stripped. Why don't we go take a look, see what it looks like now. Let's do that. So now we're at the cockpit. Wow, it looks absolutely wonderful in there. Steve, tell us how you did this. Okay, a lot of work was involved in this cockpit. When we got it, it was completely gutted. The only thing we really had was the control stick and the ejection seat, but they were really in rough shape. It took nearly five years for the these guys to create or clean the correct instruments for this, this cockpit. This aircraft was, was uh, improved, restored with labor of love from all the volunteers and staff members involved here. The cockpit especially, just because of all the detail work that was done, the scope here, he added the map on there to give it a little realism and it's almost ready for display, and that's what we're headed for. So thanks, Steve, for being the spokesperson for the whole restorations team. I know that dozens of people have worked on this over the years, and thanks for bringing this airplane back to what it looked like in 1955. I appreciate that, thank you. So Project FICON wound down in 1956, and all of the RF-84Ks were either scrapped or turned back into RF-84Fs except for this one and two others. The role that was fulfilled by the RF-84Ks was later taken over by the Lockheed U-2 spy plane, a very famous aircraft, long skinny wings like a sailplane, jet engine, flew high enough to evade Soviet air defenses until 1960 when they shot one down, creating a huge international incident. But that's a story for another time. Now this is a fascinating airplane and we didn't have time to cover everything. So if you have questions or comments, please uh, leave them under the video and we'll get to them as much as we can. Uh, in the meantime, come to the museum and see all the wonderful aircraft that we have here. And if you've seen something in the background that you're curious about, let us know. Maybe we'll do a behind the wings on it. In the meantime, subscribe. If you subscribe already, thank you. If you don't subscribe, just subscribe already. I have to get back to work now. Bye.